Hello, welcome to Geeky Hijinks, home of the Mischief Makers, and welcome back to another weekly roundup for January, week 4. This is a segment of my channel where I go through all the films and the TV shows I've been watching, as well as the games I've been playing, or maybe completed. We'll find out. But if you're not following me on Instagram and Letterboxd, make sure you do, because generally what I like to do is, as I'm watching the films on my TV, I'll be talking about the films on Instagram story as I'm watching it, if it's a crazy experience, like one of the films I've watched this week, you can enjoy my reaction to that film, whether it be a little screenshot of myself in horror of what I'm watching, or my general thoughts halfway through. And once that film's watched, I go straight onto Letterboxd, give it a brief little summary, and then wait for my weekly roundups to give you my overall thoughts in a bit more detail. So without further ado, let's get started. And as always, I'm gonna try and do this in one take because why not? So let's begin with one wonderful cup of English coffee at 8 p.m. I hate my life. Mm hmm. So, I hate when your mobile goes on battery mode because it likes to go to sleep every five seconds. So here we go. What was the first thing I watched in the week? And I hope you're having a good week so far. It's probably Wednesday today. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I recorded this yesterday on a Tuesday. So I hope you're having a very good week so far and it's almost the weekend. And I hope you have so many good plans. Because there's a few good films coming out in the cinema soon, isn't there? There's um, Moonfall on the weekend. There's, um, oh, what else is there? There's Moonfall. There's another one I wanted to watch. Never mind. So I <laughs> just get stuck straight into this. Because um, that's why I'm here. Well, that's what you're here for, hopefully. So, as always, I start my week off with my beloved, 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 beloved Shudder movie, which this week was a slap face. I'm not going to go into too much detail because... I've got a review coming out this Friday. Essentially, this is the newest Shutter film to come out this Thursday coming. Um, so, tomorrow. And then my review is going to be out on Friday. So, um, all I'll say is, again, it shudders. You just do it to me. Potential wasted. That's all I'm going to say. So, make sure to watch my review and you'll see why. So, the next day, I like something a bit more light, and I was feeling something a bit more different, because I like to go a bit dark, a bit deep, and then maybe something a bit light. And because I've watched a lot of animation, especially I've, I've caught up with all the Pixar's, so if you've got any animations from last year, or maybe ones that you've watched, that I may not have watched, let me know in the comments, because I love animation, so if you know any little hidden gems or ones that you really enjoyed, and if I haven't watched them, I put them on my list and give them a go. So, I had no animation, so instead what I watched was a film called Emma. Now, Emma is a film I've seen floating around, and it stars uh, Anya Taylor-Joy. I'm a massive fan, fan of hers ever since I saw her in The Witch, and obviously Queen's Gambit, uh, Last Night in Soho, even like her in New Mutants. Basically, anything she's in, she kills. And I saw this, and period dramas aren't really my thing. But after reading the synopsis, which generally is about a, um, it's set in 1800s England, and she's like a in this small town or village called Highbury and it's a bit like Downton Abbey-ish and she's like a very prestigious well-known lady in this particular area of England and she likes to meddle on people's lives, play matchmaker essentially and in, in this film it kind of backfires on her but it's I went into this because I got the I got the kind of idea that this would be a film that wasn't too serious maybe a bit of a satire for what a period drama is and that's exactly what it is so I put it on and I enjoyed it like I, I, was, I was smiling throughout I was like Bill Knightley I visit Bill Knight or Bill Knightley I always got confused he plays the dad of Emma and his first appearance with the music that went along with his first entrance cracked me up because I was like okay <laughs> yeah, it made me laugh but um who has Miranda Hart's in this and she plays this perfect balance of being a, a bit of like the village idiot but not really but also she has a bit of pathos but you, simply, you can sympathize with her so she's not annoying because she has a good heart but it's, the, the cast in this is really good it's a little bit predictable because um one thing i didn't know this was based on a jane austen book and i think this is the first one jane austen movie i've ever watched in my entire life voluntarily so i, I really really enjoyed it i gave it a uh what did i give it a three and a half out of five geeky queens because um even though it was fun i enjoyed it and like, it was a bit predictable, had some moments in the middle that dragged. And he, like, and Annie Taylor Joy, as always, um, was hilarious in this, really, really good. So check, definitely check it out. Like, if it's not your thing, give it a go. And if you don't like it, that's fair enough, but I, I enjoyed it. 
what is next on the list? So, <laughs> I thought to myself, hey, what can, <laughs> what can I do? So like, like I just mentioned, I go from, I'm watching a shot of film, it's, it's a horror. I want to get a bit more light, like Emma. I need to go a bit more dark now. And there's a film that's been floating around in the film community. But, and I've had a few people in my comment section say, hey, you need to watch this. And I put on Instagram the other day, which one should I watch? Broadcast Signal Intrusion or Titan? Now, I think it's called Titan, but I'm going to call it Titan because it's just easier to say. And a lot of people told me to watch Titan. And I was like, okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, I'm laughing because I can't believe this film was made. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I'm, I'm literally going to break out in laughter in a minute because it's a funny film to even try and comprehend and explain to you guys. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> essentially, this is a film about a, a woman who had an accident as a child and she has like a, a metal plate in her, in her brain, essentially, because she almost died. And she... <laughs> I don't want to ruin this too much because I only need to go in blind. If you've not seen this, please go in and watch this film and just have your whole face melted off your skull because that's what happened to me. The first 15 minutes of this film are the craziest 15 minutes of any film I've ever seen in my entire life. That is not an exaggeration. I felt I was watching something I shouldn't have been watching. Uh, and I can't remember a film that has made me look away from the screen or hand over my face or just complete shock and this is one of the benefits of following me on instagram because i was literally updating my instagram story with what i was experiencing like it like as it was happening as i was watching the film i just couldn't believe what i was watching there are scenes involving a car if you've seen the film you know what i'm talking about the beginning of the film when you're going through like a strip club underground warehouse with like need for speed, like fast and furious vibes. I don't know what I was watching. And then it turns into like a serial killer film. And then that gets ignored. And it's the only thing I didn't really like about it. It's not a bad film. It's an experience. Like this is, I wouldn't like, this isn't bad. This isn't good. This is just an experience. Everyone should experience once and alone. Not with your children, your parents, or even your partner. Watch it alone. That's the best way because you need to process. You can't be like, if I was watching with anyone else but myself, I'd have been sweating because I'd have been like, oh my god, this is happening. We can't look. We can't look at each other in the eyes ever again. It's one of those films. It just changes genre and themes. The characters are nuts. I just couldn't believe. I'm not lying to you. The first 25 minutes, so much happens, and yet it just breezes past and it's like we just saw. We're never gonna bring up again, and I just. That kind of bugged me. If you've seen the film, you know what I mean? There's a scene where she's with, there's four people in a house and things happen in that house with those four people. If you've seen the film, that kind of gets sidelined a little bit. I'm trying to be really vague. So if you have seen the film, sorry, because you're probably thinking, just say it, man, we've seen it. But if you haven't seen it and then you're watching this video, I want you to watch it, but I'm so sorry at the same time. And then it goes to this, it goes everywhere. I can't explain this film, but my mind is melted. Oh my god! I, I literally this video like what, eleven minutes in. I could talk about this film for another ten minutes uh, because it needs that kind of time. But like I gave it a um. Oh, man, I need to really have my uh, stars ready for this. Um, where did I put it? I gave it three and a half because, like I said, it's not bad. It's not a bad film at all. It's got a lot of messages. There was a film that came out last year called Come True, very similar that had a deeper theme and I'm not really smart sometimes when it comes to these like with Babadook and stuff like that I can get it but this was like a, this was like so many layers but because I was so shocked I couldn't even comprehend what I was trying to watch or what the message was so I went on Google laughed and I was like oh okay cool that, made, that makes sense you're still crazy but you make sense so that was Titan three and a half if you have seen it please let me know in the comments and try and be spoiler free if you can just let me know in the comments what you thought and where your craziest scene was, which should have been every second of the film, especially the sink bit and the nose. Oh my god, I couldn't even look at that part. But I was in desperate need for a um, yeah, like I I was I was traumatized from that from that day onwards. So I needed to um watch something a bit light. So I thought to myself, hey, Train to Busan, <laughs> like that that's gonna pick my that's gonna pick me up from this was watched like the day after. I watched this film instead, and. What a fantastic film. 
Train to Busan if no one's seen it. I believe it's based on a manga. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's a manga. And I think it's an anime. But research, you know what? Research, guys, before you do these videos really helps. But I think I think it's based on one of the, one of those two or both. But I've heard about it. I've heard like it's like a hidden gem movie, one of the like best zombie films that have come out in recent years. And I've got to agree, that is exactly what it is. To break down the story really quick, it's essentially about a dad um, who's I uh, to do, like kind of like a stockbroker, I guess, and he's very like closed in, but he's got this daughter who he loves, and his daughter wants to go and see her mom on her birthday, but she lives in Busan and she wants to go alone because um, she thinks dad doesn't really care about her, and he's like, no, I'll go with you. And while on this train, uh, they go through a zombie outbreak, and it's, it's just wicked. Like, I love it's a Korean film. I love korean cinema so so much like it's, it's becoming some like my favorite kind of movie to watch because they don't care they just go for it they're like they don't hold back at all and the characters are amazing that's why i love anime so much because the characters are you don't just concentrate on the main character you care about everyone and that's exactly what happens in this film every side character you generally care for and you don't want to see anything bad happen you don't want to see any of them die apart from one character who i hated with all my soul and he got so many people killed and I wanted him to die horrendously I hate that guy if you've seen it you know what I'm talking about oh there's one in every film but this guy played it so well I hated him but it's really really good film very gory very gruesome the zombies aren't messing around it's 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 brilliant like for me it's for me it's like one of the best zombie films since uh Shaun of the Dead and 28 Days Later which are my favorites one of my favorite zombie films like the brilliance definitely check out train to busan if you hadn't it's a, it's amazing but like i said it's it gives you every single emotion tension suspension fear uh you, like you get tearful you get emotional it's gut-wrenching it's heartbreaking it's everything it's it's, it's great and then <laughs> what are they what i'm laughing because literally i was like hey i, I, I watched the shutter i'm gonna watch a light film with emma and then every single film i've watched i've just realized it's a dark dark film <laughs> So each day I was just like, since like Titan, I was just like, oh, it doesn't matter what I watch anymore because every film's gonna be light. I could watch Scarface and that's gonna be like a Disney film. Anyway, <laughs> so, you know what's really annoying? Like I, sh I should really add the films on here in order because I'm, I'm sort of scrolling up and down trying to see which order I watch these films in. So, I, what do I watch? Da -da 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 -da. Okay. All right, so on the weekend, just gonna watch two films now like i mentioned i wanted to watch either titan or broadcast signal intrusion and i chose titan but then i wanted to watch broadcast signal intrusion as well because that's a film that my uh, my dude sean from lost in the real watched last year he told me i would i should definitely watch it i'd definitely enjoy it lisa loves also watched it and, I, and she enjoyed it too i think she gave it three and a half i'm pretty sure top of my head and um i was always intrigued they're the only two people i heard speak about it so i wanted to watch it and uh Put it on with my girlfriend over the weekend. She hated it. She didn't like it. And it's because it's a film that has a lot of loose ends. Which I don't mind. I've seen enough films to know when I'm going to get something cliche. And something by the numbers and a bit tropey. And with this film, they could have just done that. They could have given us they could have been given us a resolution, happy ending, blah blah blah. But they didn't. They gave us so many breadcrumbs to follow. And what I liked about this film... Is it was very ambiguous and you could literally have different endings depending on the clues you've been given throughout the movie so if you haven't seen it generally it's about a, a guy called um i've forgotten his name but basically the main character and he's oh, actually give me one second i need to find out the guy's name i'm on train to busan again see that film is just stuck in my mind okay okay what's the guy's name okay so the actor's called um harry shum jr and he, I've never heard of this good guy before, but he's really good in this film. I need to look out for more stuff he's in because very captivating. Like he keeps you engaged the entire film. But he plays a character called James and James essentially is going through a bit of grief because his um, girlfriend essentially has gone missing. And he's not really dealt with that too well. And this film set in the 90s and he's kind of like into like VCR tapes and Betamax. And he discovers a few tapes where a few of them have been hacked. Um, hence the name Broadcast Signal Intrusion. And they've been hacked by this really creepy character called Sally. Like, like how H-A-L, but it's Sal, so S-A-L-E. Um, and it's like a robotic 
woman, but with a human face. It looks like they've had their eyelids and lips cut off. It's really, really like if you, like it's pretty scary as a mask. Like really, really scary for me. If I saw it down a dark Kelly, I probably would produce a shepherd's pie on the spot. If you know what I mean. And he gets obsessed with these tapes. I need to find who who is the hacker? Why do they do this? And then he puts together clues. I'm not gonna give anything away because, like I said, it's. It's very engaging, there's a lot of mystery, it's very like much like a film noir, and if you like those kind of films, you really like this. And um, I thought my battery was about to run out then for a second, I was like, no. But it's it, like you're on this journey with him, trying to figure things out, and what I really enjoyed is technically, there's like five different ways this film could go. And even when the film ends, you get an ending that's very ambiguous. Some people, like my girlfriend, did not like. She absolutely hated this film because of the ending. I didn't mind it because when you think about everything that's happened in this film and certain, sen certain sentences that are said and certain character interactions that happen, there's so many different ways this film could go. And so the way it ends may not be the way the film ends, if that makes sense. There could be different versions that happened early in the film but it just happened to end this way really interesting so if you haven't watched it definitely check it out if you like your mysteries if you like films kind of like searching for example it's a really really good film but i'm trying to think of a film that was like this um probably memento by uh christopher nolan very much had those kind of vibes to it where you're really engaged and you're trying to work out each clue as it comes along it's kind of like that but not as complicated as memento but just as engaging and I gave, um, I gave Broadcast Signal Intrusion three and a half out of five geeky coins. Now, I didn't mention it before, uh, because I was getting too into it, but I gave Train to Busan four and a half out of five geeky coins. Like I said, excellent film. Broadcast Signal, Broadcast Signal Intrusion is, um, is really, really good. Definitely check it out. So, the last film I watched which was on Sunday. I just wanted to watch a film I've seen once, years ago. And it was Flight Plan with Jodie Foster. Um, really good, like re like a very underrated film. Like kind of like uh, Panic Room is also underrated Jodie, Was uh, Jodie Foster film. And uh, cause I, I love films that sit on airplanes like um, Air Force One with Harrison Ford, Nonstop with Liam Neeson, um, Red Flight with, uh, oh, what's her face? She plays Regina George in Mean Girls. But like films that are kind of on planes and there's an air of mystery and like who done it kind of thing. And that's like Jodie Foster's film Flight Plan. Essentially about a, a mom that goes on a plane with her daughter. And the daughter goes missing. And she tries to find her on this plane, but she can't find her. And then it then there's like a little twist. And she's trying to find her daughter basically. But then uh, like I don't want to go again. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but essentially she's trying to find a daughter and it's there's a lot of manipulation and um, like who, what's going on here? And it's really, really good. Very cheesy sometimes in its editing. Like there's some, there's some. It's very tense and suspenseful one second, but there's some certain shots, and it's kind of like very cheesy. Um, so it kind of takes you out a little bit, and you think, oh man, like I was, I was enjoying this film, but then sometimes you throw in those kind of moments, and it's like, mm, you kind of like, yeah. Like I said, not great editing, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. But definitely worth checking out. Uh, I gave it three and a half um, out of five. I'd probably give it three now thinking about it because it's good. But like I said, it's very, very predictable. Like if you've seen some films like it and like like Nonstop, for example, uh, similar, but there was more characters in Nonstop. So you like you could try and work out, okay, who's against Liam Neeson? But there's so many characters, it could be anyone or two. And with this film, there's so little characters and there's only so many characters that are really concentrated on. But it can only be one person so I kind of figured out really quickly but definitely worth checking out those are the films I'm watching um, I watched a wicked one last night on Monday but that's gonna come out talk about that next week I'm gonna even do a hidden gem on that one because it is really good in regards to TV shows I didn't really watch anything apart from I started a TV show that my brother brother's fiance spoke about and Lisa loves definitely spoke about called money heist I've heard nothing but good things about this, and um, I watched the first episode last week, and really engaged it, like, definitely my cup of tea, very, very suspenseful, a lot of tension, and it end. I only watched one episode, and the way it ended it, I was like, <gasps> but definitely great, like, I, I'm going to probably bang it out all this week, I can speak it to you about it properly, but based on the first episode I watched last week, 
really 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 good so when it comes to next week i've watched the, the whole series and then i can talk about it more and if you should watch it but so far I'm really impressed now one thing uh one thing if i missed any film no i'm actually doing all right for time but in regards to games i've been playing this week alas i completed final fantasy 7 a uh, fantastic is my battery about to run out again oh crap yeah it ran out again but in regards to games, like I mentioned, I completed Final Fantasy VII. What a fantastic, fantastic game. I definitely want to do like a little mini review on it because that's like I love getting into gaming and talking about games I've played. So I want to do like a little mini review as to why you should play it if you have never watched it. But I have Final Fantasy VII is one of my favorite games of all time, even on PlayStation 1. Um, I'll talk about it more in detail, like my history with the games, um, why it means quite a lot to me. But the, the remake is fantastic. I played, literally my routine is, I work, dinner, watch a film, talk about it on Instagram, edit to letterbox, and then I will record something for YouTube, or do a bit of editing, whatever I'm doing, then I'll play two hours of Final Fantasy VII, then I'll go to bed, but then two hours turned into like three to four, I was addicted to the game, completed it, and um, one thing I do want to mention though is, like there's one YouTuber called Paul Tams, you may know him if you don't, Great, great, great guy. The description to his channel is below. He done a really nice thing for me this weekend. I was talking to him about Final Fantasy VII because he's a huge fan of the games and anime as well. So we always talk about that all oh, on a weekly basis. We talk about one or the other, but this particular time was Final Fantasy VII. And um, he kindly gave me um, in the post Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, which is a unbelievably amazing, like CG. It's a basically an anime, but not in 2D form, it's in 3D. But I watched this like years ago. I must have been, I must have been like 19, 20 years old when this came out. I can't even see when this film came out, 2009. Yeah, that's about right. 2009? That's where I was younger when this film came out. Um, 2004, yeah, is it 2004? I think it, was, yeah, it must have been 2004. I don't even know how I am anymore. <laughs> but great film, amazing music. If you love the Final Fantasy VII games, Definitely watch this. Um, yeah, I can't wait to watch this. So, Paul, thank you, thank you so much for watching that. I really appreciate it. And the next game I'm going to watch is... Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I wish I was more prepared. Okay, all my games are falling down here. Okay, they've fallen down the back of the TV. I'm not going to break my spine on, on YouTube to go and get it. But I was going between Jedi Fallen Order, Paper Mario on the Switch. And I, but I'm in an RPG mood. Like, uh, like Final Fantasy, I want to play a long, long game. So I was going between, I wanted to play, I got Dragon Quest XI basically. Um, I've, I've never played the games, but it always looks very interesting to me. Went in CEX, found it for a tenner, and I thought, here I have some of that, thank you very much. So I, um, oh my god, I look like a smurf. <laughs> um, so Paper Mario, my brother wants me to play Paper Mario, because he lent it to me for one. And, and I want to, I know he wants me to know what I think of it, but I don't know. I'm, I, you'll know next week I'm playing, so you need to decide. But... That is my weekly roundup, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And as mentioned, follow me on Instagram and Letterboxd to find out what films I've been watching this week, because then you can get an idea of what I'm going to be talking about next week. And any of the films or the TV shows, or even the games I've played this week, if you have any opinion on them, opinion, any opinion on them, slow down, Joe. Zen. What's up? If you have any opinion on anything I've said today, leave me in the comments below. Whether you thought Joey talking about it was terrible, that's overrated. The best thing I've ever seen in Final Fantasy VII sucks. Let me know in the comments below because I genuinely am interested. But until next time, stay out of trouble.